Hey guys, welcome to another home lab series video today. In today's video, we're gonna actually be playing around with Chasm. Um, so this was actually a very fun find that I found um, on the self-hosted Reddit, um, or subreddit, um, where it was essentially some, there was a Reddit post that was essentially like, hey, I want to like do like VDI, virtual desktop interfaces, right? And essentially that's like workspaces. Like if you've ever worked with like AWS workspaces, it's essentially that where you essentially go, hey, I want to just go to a browser, hit, hit a workspace, and you essentially have a workspace that you can work on. So you essentially run on the hardware, but you just have the GUI and everything already in just the browser. So you don't have to actually like, you know, spin up anything. It's just all there. So um, kind of playing around with that. I found Chasm and actually it, like pretty much hits the spot um, with it. So I wanted to guys show you how to install it and essentially show you what their interface kind of looks like. So. This video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you like my content, uh, want to sponsor me or send me some free swag, my email is in the description below. So, okay, let's get started, guys. Okay, so the first thing that we have, um, so we have our, our you know blank server template. We can log into it, um, 146. Um, so Chasm actually, um, you, you can self-host it, obviously, because that's why we're do this home lab series of things that you can self host. Um, but it essentially just runs on Docker. So it will do do and install and get all your Docker stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually install Docker because if you don't have it installed, it won't work, right? Um, so here we go. We'll add that config manager and we will do the install. So adding the repo, downloading the repo. That's taking a lot longer than I'm expecting. That's weird. I broke my server, guys. I broke it. The video is over. It's all done. We're gonna call it. <laughs> uh, let's just give that a second here. Um, we'll go to our GitLab project. Also, set up the DNS while we well, while we wait for that. Um, oh, yeah. Let's sign back out here. Go back to our normal connection. We did set up LDAP for for GitLab, but. Oh, not my projects on on that user. So, but if you're interested, you should go check out my my other video for that. Okay. Uh, one command at a time. I honestly hate the copy and paste here because you can't like click. You just have to right click. Okay. Adding repo. We're gonna sit here. We're gonna contemplate. We're gonna look at this and think, why is this taking more than like, like half a second? Okay, so something is clearly wrong. Oh, um. Oh. Ah, uh, it's the DNS, guys. It's the DNS. Didn't get the DNS server right. All right, let's 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 give it a restart. Okay, see, this is what happens when you're too tired to actually like set up a server. You can't even, you, you, you gotta type in the full IP and get the right DNS server. Okay, so what we're going to do while that reboots, we will update DNS. Um, so make sure you update the serial number and then add the DNS entry. And we're gonna just call this chasm in a and one out one forty six. Okay, so um, commit this. All right, so that last committed, we can log back into our server. And actually run run the command. Ah, see, there you go. See, it's always DNS, guys. If you ever have a problem, like something like that hangs, it's clearly always DNS. This is why I didn't want to become a network person because it's always DNS. That's the <laughs> it's, it's a running joke. If you ever work in tech and you're always all like, why doesn't this work? It's always usually a DNS 
slash networking thing. Uh, because it's like, well, how does it get to the internet? What, what are the security, you know, routes or, or policies that you need to uh, think about? And that's just the running joke when you work in any, you know, tech industry or just work in tech for any company because it's like, wow, I can't get to the internet. It's clearly a networking problem, right? <laughs> so, but while we wait for Docker to install, we will look up Chasm. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, Chasm. Um, so Chasm Workspaces, it, it essentially containerizes and uses things, uh, uses the containers in the back backend to essentially spin up and then you essentially just are writing on a container on the machine from uh, the web GUI. Um, so this was this is kind of like similar to like how we had like code server set up, um, but this is this is different though um, because this is more like containerized apps that you, it runs on the back end. So the thing to note with this is essentially um, you only have so much space on your server. So like when you download all these Docker images and stuff like that, you want to be cognizant of how much space you have, right? So I have like 40 gigs right now, but if you were to actually build this, you probably want a lot bigger of a hard drive. Um, so the, you know, they have actually both a server and a cloud provider. So you've got community edition, professional, enterprise. Um, in this case, we're gonna just stick with the community free edition. Um, if you do want to do, you know, more features or support, you can obviously do more, um, but we're not going to, you know, do more than five concurrent session limits, honestly. Okay, so now that is the finished installing. We're going to enable Docker and start Docker. Um, the other prereq was Docker Compose also needed to be installed. So we're gonna install Docker Compose and make sure it is executable, so. Okay, so next thing we'll do is actually do the install. Um, the getting started, okay, wait. Uh, um, chasm install server installation. Um, they actually do a very nice like thing that like GitLab does where like they GitLab has the omnibus. This is the single server installation. Now you can obviously have multiple servers um, because you know, say for example, you want to spread out the load or whatnot for your agents. It makes a lot more sense. So, but we're gonna just do the standard install. Um, they actually made it very simple. So you essentially just change the dev directory, curl the package, untar, and run the install. Um, so we're gonna just paste all that see where it goes and run the install. You'll have to accept the license and user agreement, so hit Y. And then it'll go through the install. It's just a script that will install other packages, so like installs LSOF, sees that Docker is installed, see that Docker uh, Compose is installed, and then downloads all the containers. So you can see the FS layer, these are containers stuff here. Um, and at the end of the day, I mean, there have been a lot of like single standalone installs that I've done, but this one actually works. Um, some of them aren't like perfect and, and I'm actually really impressed because usually it doesn't always work, uh, because it's always like, oh, you have to use like this very specific version of, you know, Ubuntu or just a, a Debian server or like Oracle Linux or like CentOS, um, because it's actually a lot harder to actually install and on, you know, and test on every single operating system. But maybe I got lucky and I'm running Oracle Linux 8 and it just works. So. Um, so while this installs, um, you know, there's, there's multiple ways to do it. We're just doing the single install. You can obviously do the multiple server install where you can actually spread out each of the services. So like the web application, the manager, the proxy database, and you can separate it all up. Um, if you want to go that route, this, this makes it more sense for like, you know, HA, if you want to, you know, like actually like not have once, well, one single point of failure, like one thing that just goes down, you know, everything goes down, right? Um, but the cool thing about this is essentially once you once this is all created, you you can essentially like have your family or who, whoever um, use it um, and just go here and log in as the user or you can create a user for them and then just be like, yeah, you know, you said you're running like on a Chromebook or something that has like little to no resources, but you can use a browser, right? That's, this is like the perfect use case for it. Or, you know, say you're doing a home lab or like doing something and you just need, you know, this container to run and you just need like, you know, a Debian web GUI or something, right? Um, this makes it very easy to just kind of streamline that process without needing to like stress out like, 
oh, well, now I need to go, like, download this and, like, install it on a different computer or, like, dual boot my computer or something. Um, and it's, it's super nice. They actually have the full-on container repository um, that they have default default workspace images also um, that you can choose from. So they, they actually have, like, a lot of workspace images because they do it from almost every source. You got desktop images too from Ubuntu, Suze, Kali, Trace Labs. Um, but they also support um, you creating your own also. So that's that's a nice thing because like say for example you're doing this in a corporate environment, right? Um, and you have you know this specific set of hot, uh, software that you use in your environment. Um, like say for example you use like. Microsoft Teams or something. So you want Teams installed on every single, uh, any workspace that, you know, an employee would use. You want to make sure Teams is installed on there so that they can utilize Teams. Um, so that might be a separate video where we actually create our own Docker image that we use that includes, you know, specific pieces of software and then we, we run it off of this. Okay, so now that we have it installed, um, they have a set of credentials that are in here that essentially just your default. So don't lose these credentials or you might want to change them too. Um, and in this case, I'm just gonna just put it on the server real quick, but we'll probably end up putting this in our vault warden um, afterwards. So um, I'm just gonna put it in here real quick so that we can use it there. So what we will do is now hit to HTTPS chasm.dragon.local. Um, it just runs on HTTPS. Um, so we'll proceed. So now by default, it will use the admin and uh, admin pass that was created. Um, I hope that concludes this. Okay, so now you can see that we have a dashboard, a few things. You can see obviously there's nothing really showing here because we don't have anything. Um, so the first thing here, and I don't know, um, settings, theme dark. All right, that's the first thing doc theme and then we're gonna actually go to workspaces so we're gonna go to the workspace registry so the the few things to note is you can see here how much space you have left that you can actually download so you can see it in the upper right corner of all these it tells you how much each of these containers will essentially images download as so be aware of this in case you start running out of space or whatnot um, so what we're going to do is actually do like two installs so we're going to actually do the chrome one so we'll install chrome just to kind of show you hey what does just an app look like um, but we'll also install like oracle linux so let me find it i think i saw it earlier yeah oracle linux um, so that you can see like what a desktop version looks like okay so now it's downloading the background. You can actually see the installing download in the background. So estimated size, whatnot. Um, I this is the only place you can see it actually like downloading. So I'm just gonna stick on this page to download. But as you can see, there's like a lot of other things in here um, that are just from Ka Chasm. Um, so they they've they've built this out quite a bit. If you want to play Doom, Doom is also in there. Um, that's actually really funny. Doom is actually in there. <laughs> um, but you also have a lot of nice uh, tools. Based off of what I see here, most of this looks Linux based and I don't see any Windows service. So I'm not entirely sure if this supports like Windows images. Um, so that's something that I'll probably, probably play around with, but I see Steam. Um, you got Sublime Text. Only office, so like there's there's a lot of like just tools that you would probably see on a normal Linux box that you would install if you if you were to use it essentially. Um, so we're gonna wait for these these to install here. It's probably gonna take a few minutes, but we'll fast forward the video and once it's installed, I'll show you the user side. Okay, now we are back. It has installed both our Oracle Linux and our just Chrome containers. So what we'll want to do is I'm going to open an incognito tab um, because there was a user login section that you can log in as a default user. Um, you can also create them, but we're going to use that to show you what the workspace actually looks like um, from a user perspective as opposed to managers, management's perspective. So we'll log in as the user, grab the password and log in. So you can see that we actually have two apps in this case, is what you would call them. Um, so we have the Chrome browser app plus the Oracle Linux app. So when you when you click on it, 
you can actually open a session or you can open a new tab or a new window. We're going to use the current tab and launch the session. So you can see that it essentially just connects to a kind of virtual desktop, but it only has Chrome, just Chrome, nothing else, just, just Chrome. So you can see how like I, you know, minimize that and, but it's, it's just Chrome. Um, so, you know, this, this is obviously great. If you just need Chrome and you don't need anything else, see text in the note. Um, and you know, you can just go to like google.com still has internet. It'll still, it'll, it'll proxy through the internet on that server. So if your server has internet, it should have internet. So we can also show you that we can actually exit the Chrome session and can, it'll destroy it. And we can open Oracle Linux. This one will have a desktop interface. And because the image is already downloaded, everything is actually like super quick. It just kind of just spawns. So you can see their, their default image includes like Chromium already installed, Zoom, um, Nextcloud, you know, Firefox, OBS Studio, Telegram, Visual Studio Code. So like this image already has a lot of stuff that you would use in an office. Um, so Chasm does a very good job of just kind of giving you some an easy start without you needing to like build your own images and whatnot. Um, but if you do have custom software, that's a good idea to, to build your own image. Um, so to kind of note this, you can actually also see um, things running in the background with um, from Docker side. So you can see how like in here, it is now running a in the desktop image that we downloaded as my user here. So essentially on the back end, it's just running a Docker container. So this is this is all a Docker container at, at the end of the day. Um, so from like a resource perspective, you need to just look and watch out for from, hey, I mean, like if you, your server doesn't have enough memory RAM and you say you have like five people using, you know, this, you're all sharing resources, right? Um, it's not necessarily, oh, I everyone has the exact same like, hey, you know, the 32 gigs, everyone gets 32 gigs. No, my, if my server only has 32 gigs, it's shared between each, all the containers. So just something to be aware of. But... Play around with it, guys. Let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna play around with it more too. We'll see. Um, I might want to see if I can find if I can get like Windows to work on this because that would be kind of cool, or find like another software that would actually run like Windows VDI um, that you could host yourself. So, um, if you like the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.